Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 536 of Screw the Commute podcast. Today's episode is a freebie for you and a follow-up from the last episode on getting ready to do audiobooks. Today, you are getting the intro, chapter one, and chapter two from my book, Online Joint Venturing, How to Be in Front of a Million Warm Prospects in the Next 90 Days. This is from a practice session I did to make sure I'm doing things correctly to be accepted by ACX and Audible. You know, Audible is owned by Amazon, and that's the big time for audiobooks. And after doing this practice session, I can assure you, <laughs> I, I can double assure you that you should do small practice sessions before diving in to your entire book. You may not notice on this sample, but I learned a ton about what I should do and what I should not do when I record the entire book. One of the mistakes I made was not using a pop screen. I thought the foam cover on my microphone was good enough. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> and I had to spend a ton of extra time trying to fix what are called plosives. I fixed many of them, but some were just not fixable. If you listen carefully, you will hear some of them when I say a word with the letter P in it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this sample, and I encourage you to both go back to episode 535, of course you go screwthecommute.com slash 535, to hear how to get ready to record, and it also has a link to a fantastic webinar by Derek Depker, giving you all the details of how much money you can make and a bunch of other stuff. It's really been one of my most popular webinars. So here we go. Here's the sample. Online joint venturing. How to get in front of a million warm prospects in the next 90 days. Written by Tom Antion. Narrated by Tom Antion. Hey, that's me. Introduction. If you know what to say and do, you can get other people to promote you in a big way. Unless you're a supermodel, male or female, you just can't walk up to a powerful joint venture prospect and say, promote my product. There are rules to the game, and not knowing them can get you disqualified in a hurry. Hello, everybody. It's Tom Antion here to tell you a little bit about why joint venturing can be so lucrative for you. Not only is it super powerful in helping you take your existing business to the next level, it's a perfect promotional vehicle if you're just starting out. When you're on all these internet forums and when you're trying to get into internet and digital marketing, you always hear about the value of the list. When you're first starting out, you don't have a list. I'm going to give you the method of approaching joint venture partners so you can overcome this problem. These are people that have already blazed the trail before you. Some have big lists and some have smaller lists. At any rate, they're further ahead than you are. The first thing I want to talk to you about is how valuable this can be to you if you make this a priority. I'd say in the next 90 days, you could probably be in front of a million people that never heard of you before through your joint venture partners. That all depends, though, if you do everything that I teach here and you do it right. Also, these aren't a million people like Facebook people that never heard of you. And it's not just people that have fleetingly heard about you. These are people that hear about you with a warm introduction from a list owner they already trust. Doing this can really jumpstart your entire online or offline business. That's the value of taking the time to implement what you learn in this book. It can take you from zero to doing 100 miles an hour in a very short period of time. So that's why you really have to do this correctly. 
Let me tell you about a well-known internet marketer, Daniel Hall. I heard him on a recording crediting me for putting him on the map. Years ago, he had written a wonderful ebook about speaking on cruise ships. I pretty much made my first fortune online with public speaking related material. Daniel came to me with his book. It was related to public speaking, and it was a topic I never planned on covering myself. Even though the money wasn't enormous, I promoted the book for him, and in his words, Tom put me on the map. So, if you want to get on the map or make the map bigger, dig in and pursue those joint ventures. In this book, I'll be using terms like super affiliate, joint venture partner, and big list owner interchangeably. They're all the same thing. They are people that can help make you rich. Chapter 1, Finding Joint Venture Partners. The first thing I want to tell you about is finding partners. In other words, how do you find these people? If these people have a big mailing list, you can be darn sure there's plenty of places online to sign up for their lists. The first thing you should do is get yourself a throwaway email address. You'll be using this address to sign up for various lists. I can tell you all the people you might want to deal with are not going to work out for you. With many of them, once you get to know what they're about, you may not want to work with them. Using the throwaway address will insulate your main inbox from getting spammed to death by some of these marketers. Okay, so now you have your Gmail or AOL or Yahoo or something like that email address. You sign up for marketing publications so you can get to know what they're about. If you just try to blast a broadcast email out to a bunch of list owners, it will get you deleted so fast your head will spin. It won't mean anything. You really have to play the game and approach these people on an individual basis and very carefully as I'm going to outline here. Get yourself on their list and start your research. Find out what they talk about and what issues they bring up and what kind of attitude they have about things. I'm kind of in your face and brash, but not to the point where it's obnoxious. There are some people out there who make it a point of being obnoxious. That's part of their shtick. Other people are very low key. You need to know what their nature is and you can learn that just by reading their publications, reading their blogs, reading their email newsletters and watching their videos. If you're just totally starting from zero and don't know any of the players in the field, well, how do you find them in the first place? You would just Google your topic area plus the term email magazine or the term blog or the term discussion forum. You'll immediately bring up people in your topic. You can pretty much guarantee the people that come up toward the top have mailing lists. You have to start signing up for their list and really learning about them. Another way to find joint venture partners is to visit clickbank.com and jvzoo.com. These links and all the other links I mentioned will be in your reference section at the end of this book. If you are listening to the audio version, you'll get a separate PDF file with all the links so you can easily click on them. Anyway, clickbank.com and jvzoo.com are well-established and packed full of marketers and product creators who are also marketers. Start picking out any names of people selling products. Look them up online and then just start opting in with your throwaway email address to whatever freebies they have to offer. Soon, you will be on tons of lists of people who are actively marketing online. One of the overriding principles here is you must be patient because the people that have blazed the trail before you have people chasing them around day and night. 
I mean, at any one time, I have at least 19 or 20 people trying to make deals with me to promote their stuff. I couldn't possibly do all of it. You must do the things that put yourself at the top of the heap. When someone like me is ready to promote somebody else, you need to be standing there waiting while telling me the right things about your project. You must be patient. You must do your homework. If you try to skip this step, the chances of success are very slim. The exception to this is if you are a really hot babe. I've seen several of them that have virtually nothing important to say, make it big just on their looks. They get extra breaks because most of the people in the internet marketing field are guys. A really hot girl can get breaks that you can't if you're just a regular person. So, if you're a hot girl that's model material and willing to show your stuff, well, you don't have to listen to this. You can play other games. I'm not being sexist here. Yes, there are some very competent female marketers. I'm just being realistic. There are many that are just gorgeous and have nothing else of value to offer. For most of us, we have to do it correctly. So, to find your joint venture partners, start looking for their publications or emails or magazines or blogs or forums and get to know them first. That's the absolute main thing. Another thing that will happen is that once you get on some lists and start reading them, they will invariably mention other people they respect or do joint ventures with. You take those names and search them out and join their lists. Pretty soon you'll be getting all kinds of emails that are right on target for what you do. Chapter two, reaching out. When you identify some people you think you would like to target, how do you get a hold of them? I'm one of the few that you can actually even get halfway close to. Even my folks at my phone number screen calls heavily. Plus, I even have a phone number. For many of the people you may want to deal with, there is no way on earth you can call them. They hide from you. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want anybody to call them. I have a real business, and we answer the phones, uh, notwithstanding getting tons of robocalls that clog up our phone lines. But still, my people screen very heavily because I get chased around all the time. Most of the people trying to get hold of me really don't know how to play the game. They don't have a good offer. They haven't read a book like the one you're reading right now to teach them how to approach a joint venture partner. I'm not trying to be mean, but they really are a total waste of time. It's better they get screened rather than me taking time away from my business and the good partners I'm dealing with. It's just not worth it to waste time on people that didn't do their homework. The same thing will happen to you if you try to contact me or anybody else. If you don't play the game right, or if you act like you're a novice and you don't know what you're doing, nobody's going to deal with you. By approaching people before you know what you're doing, you are not only wasting your time, you are hurting your chances in the future to make deals. You know the old saying about making a first impression. When you do finally find some partners that make sense, and you won't know what makes sense until you read the rest of this book, I do need to tell you that you need to use multiple ways to reach them, not just email. Probably phone is not going to work because so many of them hide and won't speak on the phone. Not many people will have fax anymore. Even if they have fax, they probably get them through email. Actually, even snail mail is a legitimate way to reach people. Many people aren't used to seeing anything but junk mail, so this can be a good way to reach people if you can find a good address. If possible, I might even FedEx if I had a physical address. FedEx packages usually get opened and don't look like junk mail. 
I'll tell you one of the best methods is to meet someone in person. To use this method, you do have to be patient and invest in yourself. What I'm suggesting is that you go to one of their live events. Note, as I'm writing this, we are in the middle of a pandemic, but I'm certain that will be over one of these days. Many of the people you want to target have live events. Meeting them in person will go much further than trying to get emails through that don't even get to them. They either get filtered or they have other people reading them. Going to live events and meeting potential partners in person can be a good thing. However, again, you must be patient. The fact that I tell you to go to a live event doesn't mean they're going to have time for you. If they're running a live event, it's a busy, busy, busy deal. You can't be obnoxious about it and force your way to talk to them. You'll shoot yourself in the foot by not recognizing how busy they are. But attending a live event and being there when you get your chance puts you way ahead of the pack. I just want to warn you, you may not get your chance at a live event. Please don't complain to me if you spent a thousand bucks for hotel and airfare and then went to an event. At least I hope you got something out of the event. But this will put you a lot further ahead. I can't tell you the number of deals that I've made and that people I know have made because they saw somebody in person. That person is more likely, if you do get to speak to them for a few minutes, to take your call or to keep that correspondence going. It's the law of reciprocity, and that's the fact that they now have met you and have seen you make that commitment to visit their event. This means a lot to them. Doing this will get you a little bit further ahead of the pack. This still doesn't mean they're going to promote your product yet because there's a lot more to tell you about. All right, I hope you enjoyed the sample. Hey, if you'd like to purchase the entire ebook right now and learn how to get in front of a million warm prospects in the next 90 days, you can go to screwthecommute.com slash JV for joint ventures. Screwthecommute.com slash JV. And you still have a day or so left to get in on the triple whammy program to get great training, a tax deduction, and to help persons with disabilities get their scholarships. So so check that out at screwthecommute.com slash triple whammy, and I will catch you on the next episode. See you later.